I'm not gonna lie. It seems like your only interest in the defendant was his money. No, To assist in rent. I actually loved him at first because since we've both gone through the same abuse and relationships, I figured I could make this one work. Okay, by not abusing him? Your Honor, he started... There's an audio uh, from you? Yes, there is, of him threatening me. Can we play that? Yes, ma'am. Give me one second. Your Honor, I have had Mr. Knight call me several times and threaten me over my voicemails, and my new fiance is very protective over me. I'm more oh. smarter than you, You might want to not try to me, because I got a full blood and a Latino that will go off on your part. And I'll sit there and laugh while he's doing it, too, because he already don't like you. So go ahead and find out what happens, because then after he goes off, his gets involved. So around, dude. That was him after they had kicked me out and I was at a shelter in Reno. So, Mr. Massney, I, I got to go back to your original statement about you, you know, bonding and, and loving this person because you two experience the same sort of abuse. And I'm hearing this voicemail from you. <laughs> this wasn't a healthy relationship. Explain that to me. Because I have several voicemails from Mr. Do you have them? Knight. Oh, you have voicemails from the defendant? Yes. Mr. Knight, were you leaving voicemails on the plaintiff's phone? The only voicemail I left is asking him how he was doing, because I cared about him, and it wasn't until, well, he kept telling me that he loved me and he wanted the relationship to work, and then he leaves me a voicemail saying that he's with someone else. So you never left him a voicemail threatening him? No. Okay. And you're claiming that you have some? But, Your Honor, right after his dad died, Arthur had drained all the money out of his dad's bank account. Let me... Go ahead. Don't worry. The next contact will be with the DA because I meet with them again on Friday. So, have fun because they do have all of the messages. And they'll get this last one that you sent. So, you know what? I'd rather see your spot in prison. Mail fraud and death threats. Don't Play nice with me. Bye. The only threat I heard in that voicemail was the defendant saying that he had voicemails, threatening ones from you. But the reason why I asked about these voicemails is because I'm trying to assess who's credible here. What the defendant was saying here was that based on the voicemails he was getting, that he was going to report you. So to me, you lost credibility with that because those weren't threatening messages at all. And so now I've got to decide whether I believe the defendant when he says that you were making these ATM withdrawals. I do have a question for you, though, Mr. Knight. There are fee reversals. Are those in connection to the non-ATM withdrawals? Yes. So you went to your bank and said, I didn't do these? Yes. They credited the... me the overdraft fees. Okay. All right, well, I'm going to open it up for my colleagues to ask any other questions. Just one question. I want to be perfectly clear here that you went to Nevada and the defendant went with you and stayed with you. Yes, Your Honor. Even though he allegedly failed to pay rent, gave you a bounced check, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. I think we're going to excuse the parties while we deliberate in this matter. Thank you very much. We have deliberated and reached a unanimous verdict. The three of us essentially believe that this was a scam, that, Mr. Knight, you were attempting to help, and, Mr. Masney, we just didn't believe that this was a good-faith attempt at a relationship. It seemed like a money grab, and had there been a little bit more doubt in our minds about credibility. We may have found that you, Mr. Knight, didn't quite prove who took the money out of those ATMs because the statements themselves don't show. But in this case, we found that credibility really ruled the day. Mr. Mastney, those voicemails were horrible to listen to. And your defense was essentially that Mr. Knight threatened you first. The worst thing he said is that I hope you rot in jail and, frankly, that's not really a bridge too far after the voicemails he received from you. We find that we credit Mr. Knight's testimony that you took approximately $700 out of his account, that the two of you left the apartment in November, didn't even stay for the full month of November, and that you have his property. And for all of those reasons, we do not believe that you've met your burden here to recover any amount of rent from Mr. Knight, and you essentially don't have a claim. So plaintiff's claim is dismissed, and you will walk away with nothing, sir. Thank you.